I'm going to show you how you can play better golf without changing your golf swing, without going for loads of lessons, without buying the latest and greatest golf equipment. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare correctly for your tee time that's coming up. Now this example, I'm 45 minutes away from my tee time. So I'm gonna show you the ideal warm up and preparation you need to make sure you play the best golf you can when you get to that first tee. So 45 minutes on the clock. We're gonna break it into three sections. We're gonna do preparation, we're gonna do warm up, full shots, and then short game with the putting. Now we're gonna talk about preparation first. And what that time is for is to get ready get your kit prepared make sure all your clubs are in check you've got the right amount of clubs make sure like gaff things like you've got golf balls in your bag or a clean glove and maybe keep a few things in your car like if you can grab some golf balls make sure you've got enough golf balls to go out and play sounds daft but if it's a hot day take some sun cream make sure you've got the tea pegs make sure you've got drinks chocolate whatever you need to help you play the best golf you can on the golf course. Make, even making sure that your golf clubs are clean. So that's five minutes of our preparation time. It's really important. Make sure your equipment is ready for your round of golf ahead. So the first place we're gonna to go to is the driving range. Now I've got a token for 50 balls. If I'm honest, I think 50 balls is actually too much. So if you've got a playing partner, maybe share 50 balls because you don't need a lot of shots to warm up before around the golf. Now I know not every golf course has a driving range or a practice ground, so everything I'm going to show you very soon on the driving range can still be done in a practice net or a bit of a warm-up room or a simulator room if you have that at a golf course, just something to bear in mind. Right, number one thing to think about when you come to warm-up is that is exactly what it is. It's a warm-up, it's not a practice session. So you're not going to change your swing, you're not looking for technical things to try and work on before you go out and play. The warm-up is a way of getting your body used to hitting shots, getting kind of the body loose. For me, I don't do a lot of stretching before I go out and play. If you've got physical limitations and it's something you desperately need to do, well, obviously, yes, do that. But a lot of the time, I think just the hitting shots, just get that kind of warms your body up. That gets you loose to hitting shots. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll start off with some short golf shots. Now, what I like about this, it does two things. It gets our short game engaged, gets us contacting the grass correctly or the driving range mount or whatever you're on and we're gonna hit 10 shots, and each shot just has to go past the last one. So that's five down so far, and we're going strong. They're all nicely in the line, and progressively just getting a little bit further than the last shot I hit. Until that one. Now, I'm gonna to touch about that one, because when we go out and play, sometimes we hit a bad shot. But this is where we can just forget about it. Like, don't overthink it. Yeah, I've hit, I flattered it, my bad lost a little bit of concentration or whatever it is, but don't panic before you go out and play. Don't try and change anything technically. As long as you're doing all right and majority of the shots are okay, don't worry about a few kind of dodgy ones because again, this is warm up. Get your bad ones out here so they don't happen out on the golf course. And as I come to the last shot of this little first section of the warm up, notice as I'm just starting to hit these further, my swing length is getting a little bit longer. I'm increasing the speed of touch as well. And again, that's a great way of just loosening your body, ready for some longer shots in a moment. So next thing we're gonna do is start working up through your irons. Now you can either do this one of two ways. You can start with your pitching wedge, hit a full shot, nine iron, hit a full shot, eight, seven, six, five, four, whatever your longest iron is. That's one way of doing it. I actually like to do it where some warm up sessions, I'll hit the odd irons but i'll hit two shots with each odd iron or another time i'll hit two shots with each even iron it doesn't really matter so for me i think again this is just a way of getting used to hitting different irons different lengths different swing speeds different ball positions whatever it may be so today we're going to start off with i'm going to go nine iron first and kind of work my way up but hit two shots with each of the clubs it's also worth picking out a target, either a target on the driving range or something in the distance that you're trying to aim at. Don't just hit willy-nilly into an open field. Even though this is not got a lot to target to aim for here, I'm still going to pick a certain spot in the tree line in the background where I want the ball to land, how I want it to fly. Again, we're not going to do technical information here. We just want good hits, good strikes, positive reinforcement. Get that positivity raised as high as we can before we go and play. Okay, before I move into my longer iron now, one thing I'm also noting is ball flight. Right, I must admit, I'm hitting them pretty straight today. Tiny little draw, they're all pretty much landed on my target, which is a real positive. And I'm gonna take that out on the golf course today. 
However, it's not always been like that and you'll find the same. Some days you might have more of a tendency in the warm up, you might be overturning it to the left. You might be fading it too far to the right with only limited time before you go and play. This is not the time to fix that. You've got to fix that after. If you're noticing a pattern of a ball flight, that's the pattern of ball flight you should be taking to the golf course. That was nice. And if in warm up you hit one that is absolutely pure, like that one, remember it, bank it. Remember those positive feelings, how it felt off the face, the ball flight, how you felt afterwards. Because again, you can use that emotional support when you get on the golf course. Perfect. Now this is where some of the better players, you can try this as well, where you might want to try and start shaping the golf ball. So again, trying to get yourself in game mode. So I'm going to spend, I'm going to probably hit five shots here and hit, try and hit five different ball flights. Draw, fade, high, low, straight. Just so you're getting an, an eye in. I'm also monitoring weather. Like how, what's the wind doing to the golf ball today? How much is it affecting it? How do I feel? Am I warm? Am I cold? Am I hitting it further or shorter than I normally hit? Again, all that information needs to be computed for when you get on the golf course. So all in all, that's probably taken about 10 minutes of our 15 minutes we want to use in this section. So the last five minutes, we're going to just hit the woods. Hit a few three woods, get some drivers hit, and then we need to finish off. The last golf ball in our warm-up needs to be preparing us for the first tee. Whether you're going to be hitting driver, whether it's a par three, and you, whatever iron you predict you're going to hit. You've got to finish with that last shot. I'm hitting driver quite nicely there. Last couple of shots, I'm gonna just kind of tone it in a little bit, really try and picture a fairway, almost go through what would be my pre-shot shoot routine before I go out and play. So I'd be a little bit more behind the ball, maybe putting in a few practice swings. If you've played the golf course before that you're about to play, I want to try and visualize a certain hole you want to try and hit a good tee shot down. That's just a little bit less the fairway, but it wouldn't be that much in trouble. So last ball, this is the one. First tee, you're warm, you're loose, you're ready to go. Picture a nice ball flight. Think about where you want the ball to land. And this is the one we're gonna hit off the first tee. And we can absolutely stripe it. Okay, so I've got 25 minutes before my tea time now. So the next section, 15 minutes, is gonna be used here on the putting green. Similar to the driving range, this is not the time to make technical changes. This is the time to get used to the speed of the greens, the slopes, and build confidence, it's number one. So the first thing we're gonna do is kind of figure out the speed of the green. And the best way of doing that, it sounds crazy, don't go out the hole, get three golf balls, throw them down and the first thing we're going to do just spend some time rolling the balls to the edge of the green trying to get as close to the edge of the green as you possibly can now ideally we want to finish it on this line hit three puts going towards the edge and then try it a few different spots around the green so a tiny bit pacey but i can learn from that oh not bad i took too much off right let's get between those two now Oh, I think it would have done. But again, look at this. I'm just trying to gauge it towards this line. So I do that on a fairly flat put first, then maybe try one downhill, one uphill as well. So that little drill is great for pace control. It gets your eye in for the speed of the green that day. And typically the putting green on a lot of decent golf courses, the same speed as the golf course themselves. The next thing I'm gonna do, even though there's several, probably nine holes on this green, I'm actually gonna put a tee peg in the ground for this next one. I'm gonna put it in space where it's gonna give me uphill putts, downhill putts, left to right putts. And there's two reasons why I use a tee peg. First off, if we can roll the ball towards the tee peg and it hits the tee peg, Obviously that target is ridiculously small than a hole. So when we come to put to the hole in a minute, the hole will look bigger, that's one thing. The other thing is what I, what I like about the tee peg is that it's not massively um, result orientated. 
if you're skimming that T-peg or just missing by it, doesn't massively matter because you don't know if it's going to go in or out. The last thing we don't want to do is spend time on the putting green and suddenly every put we put to a hole lips out or gets unlucky because that's going to put negative mindset in our head before we go and play. And the last thing we do on the putting green before we go out and play is really try and improve and boost our confident levels. I'm going to hit several short putts because I want to get the feel of the ball going in the hole. And just that, that sound, the rattle, the picking the ball out the hole, all these confidence boosting things. You don't have to go long, you don't have to do super long putts, but just those little confident boosting ones. Because again, when you get to that first green, and if you spent time holding lots of putts, and you remember how it goes in, and you remember the sound, the feeling, that's gonna give you confidence when you get on that first putt. Okay, so it's 10 minutes before my tea time, and this is the perfect time to finish off that preparation we talked about for the five minutes when I got out of the car. Because we don't want to rush the first tea. Like the last thing you want to do, all that hard work, that practice you've just put in, suddenly go, oh no, I'm teeing off in a minute, running to the tea, not feeling prepared, not having everything ready. Get there in plenty of time. There's a few things you can do. Things like marking your golf ball, make sure you've got tea pegs in your pocket, things even like a, a pitchfork, get your scorecard. Like check the handicap board with the new world handicap system to know what exactly what your handicap is for that day and things like t-sheets make sure you know exactly what t-sheet we're on today and certainly things like gps watches sometimes they take a minute to load speak to your playing partners get prepared so that you are fully ready to battle the elements out on the golf course you're prepared you've done all the hard work you've done your warm-up you've done your practice you've done your section on the driving range, ready to step on that first tee and hopefully hit one of your best opening shots. That will do very nicely. Oh yes. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.